Well, okay, it's uh, seven o'clock. To anyone who might happen to be there, I'd like to say uh, welcome to DIY Fermentations, live stream number seven. Uh, not going to be making anything this time. Uh, just going to be a question and answer session. Uh, I am going to, I do have a small list of items that I need to get through. Uh, but before I do that, uh, Legendary Drew is in the house. <laughs> it's always a good sign. <laughs> In any event, let me go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you who might be new here, uh, DIY Fermentation is basically a, uh, it's a how-to channel for newbies just now learning out how to make uh, wine, occasionally beer, uh, as simply and as cheaply as possible. Uh, on this channel, you're going to see me uh, using recipes that are very, very simplistic. You're not going to see me using a whole lot in the way of additives uh, to my wine, uh, to the wines that are made here. Uh, you're not going to see me using sulfites. You're not going to see me using clearing agents. You're not going to see me using a whole laundry list of, of additives uh, to the wine that might end up with a better wine. But for the most part, a lot of what you can find uh, in my recipes, you can find at the grocery store. Usually I have two caveats. One, I suggest using wine yeast instead of bread yeast. But if bread yeast is all you got, then go for it. And two, you may occasionally see me using something called a peptic enzyme. And that's because a lot of fruit, or some of the fruit, has a fair amount of pectin, which is kind of difficult uh, to clear up. It, it will clear up over time, but uh, usually I don't have the luxury of time uh, before I have to use the equipment to make another batch of wine. So you will see using a all of it is optional. Just like using yeast nutrients is optional. Just like uh, Things of that nature, those are highly optional. If that's how you normally make your wine, then I say go for it. But if you're just trying to start out as the lowest possible cost possible, uh, then I usually don't put those in uh, my recipes. Uh, let's see. Oh, if you're going to uh, uh, log on or join the party, uh, if you just give me a quick shout out, just say a simple hello so I know who's there. Uh, other housekeeping notes that I want to go through. Uh, super chat, super stickers are always available. Uh, memberships are always available as well to help support the channel. Uh, I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you uh, see any of the links in the comment sections of the recipes that I have uh, uh, usually below, then generally I would suggest I go ahead and click the link. And if it's not something you wish to get at that point in time, just peruse on and find something that you do like. Uh, all right, enough of small stuff. Uh, no, no. Glad to see you make it. Uh, having fun from Morocco. <laughs> Just the name alone makes it sounds like it's fun. Uh, Sue Stewart, uh, Southeast Arizona. Welcome. Uh, William Fleming tried making a few wines and then tasted them young. They may have been fairly sour. That's normal. Uh, for the most part, a lot of wines that you make are A, going to be dry. There's not going to be any sugar in it at all. So you probably need to back sweeten them. And as you've seen in any of my six month taste testings, uh, generally the wines just aren't done. They will have a uh, kind of a harshness uh, to the taste. Um, but again, on the uh, six month wine tasting, I might say a few words on that uh, later on. Rub Duck Sue, hello. I'm here for as long as I can before I need to put the kids to bed. <laughs> Fortunately, my kids are, well, one's grown, one is, one is about to hit 16 this year, so I, <laughs> the bedtime is really not an issue, but I fully understand. Uh, TK tried your blueberry recipe. Uh, thank you for giving that a shot. Uh, TK, do you have a kiwi recipe? No, not yet. Probably not till much, much later in the year. Uh, Caribbean Queen, hi from Philadelphia. Philadelphia's in the house. Uh, Walhart, new to winemaking, have not tried yet gathering supplies. Well, it's an addictive hobby. Once you do get started, <laughs> it can it can be as, as time consuming as you want and it can be as expensive as you want. Just let me know ahead of time. Uh, da -da -da -da, Walhart, PA Northwest, Michael Dutz. I finally got done sound going. <laughs> Wait a minute. California. All right. 
Next week, Missouri, any tips on moving with brews? <laughs> Very carefully. Good luck. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, William Fleming, sorry I jumped in with my question from Atlanta. It's quite all right. Uh, we're going to be here for as long as the questions hold out. Uh, I'm about to try your strawberry wine recipe. Looking forward to doing it. My wife as well. My only suggestion with regards to the strawberry wine recipe is probably to add more strawberries. Uh, the recipe I used at the time, I think I used three pounds of strawberries. Uh, which is the minimum amount of strawberries to make, uh, or minimum amount of fruit, period, to make wine, I would suggest four or five. The strawberries have a light, very light flavor to them. So I'm just letting you know ahead of time. Uh, can you use tap water for winemaking? You could. I would probably strongly suggest against it. Uh, uh, no, I would suggest, that, I mean, you can if that's all you got. But uh, bottled water, filtered water, which is what I use, uh, would probably be recommended because you're not bringing in a lot of the, uh, for most people, myself included, a kind of a chemical taste that uh, you find in tap water. Uh, Wild Heart, banana wine will be the first attempt. I am a sweet wine drinker. Uh, well, one good thing about making your own wine, you can make it as sweet as you like. Uh, more on that later. Uh, let's see. Weekly videos. Actually, I made a change to that particular note. Uh, you probably have seen that I cut back on the number of videos that I had been doing uh, from twice a week to once a week. Um, I might go back to the twice a week formula uh, because I have a number of uh, wine tasting videos that I probably want to get out. Uh, the six and really now seven month videos that uh, need to be done in that regard. Seems as though there's quite a few of you out there that like the wine tasting videos. Uh, I don't know if, if for no other reason than to see me suffer at times for tasting wines that are not quite done. Uh, but hey, as long as you like them, uh, I'll go ahead and put them back in the rotation. Uh, the next one, while I'm on that subject, uh, the next one will be a uh, the raspberry wine, which is now at the seven month mark. Uh, it will not be this particular bottle because this particular bottle, <laughs> I've got a natural cork and I've got a nice little cap and it makes it, and it, makes it look all real nice and, and shiny. It'll be this one <laughs> with the artificial cork <laughs> and no cap. So I'll probably give this one a taste. I probably might try and squeeze this in for next Wednesday. And that's uh, the raspberry. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, wine you make, I think, I think they have the same taste. I'm assuming you mean they have the same taste, only lemon wine. Uh, it seems like, yeah, uh, because a lot of the, uh, the, the white wines, or lighter, lighter wines, uh, are kind of light in, 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 the, in the taste department, but... Um, yeah, the lemon wine definitely does have a kick to it. The pomegranate wine definitely has a kick to it. Uh, but again, um, I don't know. I guess it's just a question of just giving your wine more time uh, to age. And I probably will cover that a little bit later on. No, no, your mic is muffled. What? Seriously? Thank you. See, I need you guys to look out after me. If there's something that's not quite right, let me know. Okay, hopefully that's better. If not, uh, just uh, go ahead and chime in and let me know that uh, uh, I can adjust the mic. I'm going to get me, when I'm not doing a, a wine making video, when I'm doing a, a live stream, I'm going to get me a standalone mic, uh, something for the desk. I wanted something that, that, that was kind of, that would hang over my head where you wouldn't see it so I can actually do a, a wine making uh, video as well. But no, I'm going to go ahead and get me a microphone. This, uh, lapel mic I mean it, it's it's great and all but it it's it was like the cheapest thing I could find <laughs> I'm glad I got it but uh, uh, there can be some improvement there uh, Mike Peltz message retracted there's no take backs dude <laughs> Michael Fleming uh, haha sorry Mike is way better now oh, thank you uh, you sound great now well thank you all right uh, next step playlist okay 
this has come up kind of recent. Well, it's come up before, but um, I, I saw a lot of it line making videos. That's usually getting everything together into your primary fermenter and letting you know that you just have to wait it out. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more involved than that. Uh, so I put together a playlist. Uh, if you look at my, uh, my uh, channel page, under playlist, you'll find one that uh, that says uh, uh, winemaking. Uh, I forget if it's winemaking process or or, or the winemaking. It basically uh, is, is is it several. Oh, I know what. Why am I guessing? I can do this. Bear with me one second, because I actually prepared for this. I want I want that one, and I want that one and i want that one yeah <laughs> uh there's a playlist that has uh, uh you've seen for those of you who've seen my videos you've seen all these before uh primary versus secondary racking your wine back sweetening your wine waiting for it bottle capping bottle corking capping and labeling wine bottles and using oak chips now basically uh, these pretty much detail the steps that are involved between getting your wine ingredients in your primary fermenter and getting them into your bottle of wine ready for your glass. Um, uh, I don't put them in my videos per, uh, uh, or each and every one of my videos because, well, quite honestly, uh, I'm repeating the same steps. So when you see me doing this and you want to see what you need to do uh, following this in terms of what happens next, uh, go ahead and click on my playlist and uh, take a look at, at that, and that will show you the steps that happen between this and this, okay? Um, let's see. Let me get back to the main screen here. Da, 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 da. I need to pick that one. Okay. Okay. I think I'm back on track. No, I'm not. Let me click that and then that and that. All right. <laughs> okay. Got it. Dang it. All right. Bear with me a second here. There are so many little buttons to click. All right. Next thing. Let's see, the questions have come to a stop. Uh, recipe adjustments. Yeah. Uh, Usually about the third scene where you have me, uh, where all of the ingredients are laid out on the table and you're seeing me point to this one and you need, uh, we're going to start with an ounce of this and four cups of that and so on and so forth. Uh, sometimes when I'm in the process of making the wines and I see that I've made a, uh, um, let's just say a, a small mistake <laughs> and I didn't have the time to go back and, 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 and have a little pop-up that says, uh, a little text box that says, you know, this is what I should have said inst in instead of what I, what I actually said. Uh, any adjustments to the recipes you can and will find in the recipe in the comments section. I'll make any adjustments so the final recipe is always going to be there. Also, after the six-month tasting, if I decide that something needs to be changed, uh, I'll then also go back to the original recipe and I'll make changes to the ingredients list uh, in the comment section there as well. Uh, let's see. Question. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I love your informational videos. Thank you very much. Uh, da, da, da. Can we give more sweetness to the wines. Yes, I strongly suggest you take a look at my, uh, again, I just had that screen pull up where I indicate one of the videos that I did was on back sweetening your wine. Uh, when your wine is done, when your wine is clear, let's see, do I have one? Yeah, this one's close enough. Oh, I don't know if you will, you'll be able to tell, but when your wine is clear, and this one is getting close to being bottled. No, it's not. I made this one January. It's nowhere near being bottled, but it's clearing up quite nicely. When it really gets clear and there's no sediment and you're ready to, to bottle your wine, uh, you're ready to degas it, uh, at, at that point, you can pretty much it. No, I suggest take a look at uh, the back sweetening video because it depends on how you back sweeten it. 
If you back sweeten it the more traditional way using sulfites, uh, uh, wine stabilizers and, and such, then you can sweeten it to, to, to your liking any way you want. If you're using non-fermentable sugars like xylitol, which is what I was using initially, you can go ahead and, and sweeten your wine any way you want without having to worry about restarting fermentation. If you're doing it the, uh, by using the method, step back sweetening method that I'm currently using where once fermentation is, is stopped, hydrometer reading reads 0 0.994 or 0 0.990, uh, and I'll start adding sugar and, and, and putting it aside for a week or two to see if uh, uh, the hydrometer reading has changed. If it has not changed, then I know that fermentation is complete and I can add as much sugar as I want without restarting fermentation. It's, uh, it's described in my back sweetening video, but I think I'm going to do a separate video just on step back sweeten the step back sweetening method alone. But again, I mean, once your wine is, is ready for sweetening, you make it as sweet as you like. Uh, I like mine kind of on the semi-sweet side. Uh, uh, no, no likes hers on, on the sweet side. So usually when I'm uh, giving her <laughs> one of my finest, whether it's ready or not, uh, I'll usually again, it's, it's entirely up to you. Uh, John T. Well, live stream number seven. Um, what did you do before you retired? Of course, I kind of I put this in <laughs> in the community page. Uh, after God knows how many years, I was in IT, information technology, uh, help desk networking, was getting into uh, project management, and got to the point where okay, it was time to retire. Uh, so, yeah, I retired early. It's not like I was rolling in dough or anything like that, you know, but uh, because I had spent uh, so much of my time working for the city of Detroit in their IT department, working for a municipality pension, <laughs> or at least a partial pension, enough to, enough to supplement uh, uh, Social Security and uh, uh, such that I don't have to get another job. <laughs> <laughs> for a change. Um, let's see. As natural as possible. Uh, Wild Heart. Yeah. Um, if this were a completely natural winemaking uh, process, then I would be using wild yeast. Uh, yeast that might still be clinging to the, fr uh, to the fruit or yeast that uh, happens to be in the air. Uh, but I don't have the luxury of that kind of time <laughs> to, make, uh, to make these wines. Uh, even if I... Uh, created a yeast starter and, and used that. Uh, I don't have that kind of time, so I have to use commercial yeast uh, to get the process rolling so I can uh, get this in, in a carboy and then later on get this in a bottle so I can free up another carboy so I can, you know, repeat the process. Uh, eventually, I am going to have a, uh, a natural wine uh, video. Um, still looking at, uh, at, at the process for doing that, but uh, yeah, that, that's coming up. Uh, da, 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 da. No, no, thank you. Um, Mike's muffled again. Now, the last video, the mic was like on blast. And now this video, you guys are having a problem hearing. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be next month, but probably the month after that, I'll have enough saved up where I, from the proceeds of this channel where I can buy a microphone, a proper microphone. Well, proper enough. Um, what is your least favorite wine? That rice wine was one. <laughs> that one was so bad that I actually pulled those videos. <laughs> yeah, I'll say it was the rice wine that I made. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I'll let it go with that. Uh, no, no. Have you considered using additional flavors like spices or vanilla? You've seen me use spices, and what was the last one that I used spices for? I know I did it for the uh, uh, hard apple cider, and I know I did it for the uh, coconut water wine, where I started using started to use spices, cinnamon, cloves. Uh, but again, since I'm still fairly new to the whole winemaking process, I'm generally trying to keep it on the safe side, <laughs> okay? If I know what a basic wine tastes, you know, with just the basic ingredients, 
uh, and, it, and, it, and it turns out okay, well, then I can become more adventurous and start adding spices and whatnot to the wine. But uh, I'm not going to do that on the onset because uh, if I make a mistake and I get to the tasting and it tastes like garbage, then it was probably more so, so to, because of something that I did. And I would know that it was something that I did if I had done an original wine first. So I knew what that tastes like before I started adding a lot of spices to subsequent batches. So that's the answer to that. Uh, have you ever done a clean blank is going in and out? It's okay now. I think it's a good shirt. Yeah, I'm going to wear a regular shirt instead of this, this t shirt sort of thing. Uh, I've actually had good results just putting the microphone down in front of me. Not designed for that. Uh, in some of my videos, I, I'll have it hanging from the light fixture down j just off camera so you can't see it, <laughs> which works out quite well. So if you're watching a video and you don't see the mic, then usually it's hanging from this light fixture in my, in my living room <laughs> where you can't see it. But yeah, the mic is going to have to, it's going to have to change. I'll, I'll end up getting something. Uh, da, 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 da. You can put the lapel on a bend instead of a collar. Mm, we'll see. I have to think about that. All right, uh, let's see. Recipe adjustments did that. Oh, yeah. Uh, every now and then, last month I had two of these uh, questions that came up. Uh, with regards to the legality of making wine in a given country. Uh, the uh, Arabic countries, and I won't name which ones, uh, I'll get questions from, from some of the... Uh, uh, People who have seen my videos, you know, ask me uh, questions pertaining to uh, how they can reuse yeast or, or basically how they could make wine in their particular country. And uh, periodically I'll, you know, find out what, uh, what the law is regarding uh, Arabic countries and for the most part, no, no alcohol. So uh, those are the ones that will generally let them know that I can't answer their question. It's not like I'm censoring it. I mean, this is America. I can say what I want to whoever I want, more or less. Uh, but no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on the up and up. And if it's illegal in their country, then I'm just going to, I'm not going to be able to answer their question. Uh, let's see. Lean to your left, it ruffle, it muffles. Can you answer their questions? Um, question, uh, uh, William, then, you know, feel free. Uh, I have no problems with that, just like I have no problems with uh, those who, of you who are more advanced winemakers answering questions that, that sometimes pop up in the comment section uh, for the wines uh, with techniques that I normally will not use on this channel. Please feel free to chime on in. Again, I only recommend that uh, you don't uh, try and tell me how to make my wines because <laughs> I'm going to make my wines my way. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I'm not mad at you at all for, for doing that. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, let's see. I think the last item on my checklist, and I'm glad I started doing this checklist thing. Uh, advanced, this is for members who might not have seen it because I did it like this afternoon. Uh, I've added something to the member channel, both primary and, and secondary, uh, with my videos. Uh, you already have advanced viewing of uh, usually a day or so uh, before I make the videos public. Uh, but I've also added, uh, uh uh, a video where uh, the first day's shooting, which is usually like the first three scenes up to and including uh, the ingredients being spread out on the table, um, I'll have the uh, raw version of that uploaded for that particular day. Uh, I'll go ahead and finish up the video and then uh, it'll be like normal where you'll have the, uh, the normal uh, advanced viewing ad-free version of the video. But uh, no, if you want to see uh, the next upcoming video in its current state where I happen to stop, you know, for that first day, uh, you have options of seeing that there as well. And that, again, that's for the members. Um, do you have William? <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> Yay, finally caught a live stream. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Uh, do you have any, any one year? Nope, I don't have any one year taste coming up. You've got to remember, this channel was started last February, all right? Uh, the wines that I made uh, initially, uh, before I learned that you need to wait for the wines to be done, those are gone, <laughs> okay? You think, oh, 
Mm, no, it'll, it'll be at least another two months, I think, before uh, one of the, I think the lemon wine I've got saved up, this is gonna be the first one year wine that I'll have. Uh, I saved that one bottle. Uh, glad I did too. So yeah, you're gonna start seeing them come up, but uh, not for at least another two months. Uh, and usually that one year bottle is the last bottle that I, that I have left over. Um, <laughs> uh, Joshua, how are your meads coming? Uh, did not grab, or did I? I did not grab my first mead. Uh, that's coming up uh, to the one year mark as well. No, that's coming up on the six. Yeah, that's coming up on the six month mark. Uh, probably might do that one next month. Uh, mead number one. Uh, it's also getting to the point where, because I now have more carboys available to me, I'm still, I shouldn't have like four more. Uh, it means that I'm able to let my wines bulk age a bit longer, uh, usually by an, by an additional two, sometimes three months. And I've got, an, uh, I think at least three of them now that are at the six month mark, still bulk aging, they haven't been bottled yet. So I'm kind of wondering if I'm gonna be able to continue on with the six month tasting. Uh, It'll, it'll probably be a, on a as this is whatever wine happens to be uh, bottled that's seven, eight months uh, along the line. But six months, I think I'm running out of those. I think I might have at least three, maybe four uh, ones that are bottled that, uh, that, are, that are getting close to the six month mark. Uh, this raspberry was one. Uh, let's see. I did the advanced unfinished videos. All right. And I've gone through my initial checklist. I didn't leave anything out for the first time. All right, I'm open for questions. Wait a minute, Michael, there's a community page. <laughs> Brother, where you been? <laughs> yes, there is. You can either click on my, uh, uh, my icon and that'll take you straight through the community page or you can click on, uh, I think wherever it says uh, DIY fermentation, uh, uh, and underneath that, you'll have the uh, subscriber count. Uh, that that should take you back to the uh, uh, home uh, channel page as well. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's good. I right, don't need that. Uh, what has been your favorite, William, what has been your favorite wine so far, despite the age issues? It still is the, um, a couple of them now, um, the black cherry, most definitely. I make apple all the time. So apples, apple, any, any version of the apple wines that I've made, especially once I learned how to make a sparkling apple wine. Uh, those two would be definitely on the top of the list. The lemon wine wasn't bad. And the, uh, the uh, Concord grape wines are also pretty good. Uh, the last batch that I made, uh, my son finally opened up a bottle after nine months and uh, expressed that he and his, his fiance loved it. It was overly strong at about 16% ABP, uh, but they suggested that I make more of it. I've got another batch already in the works that I started back in November that actually I was just going to keep to myself because it is pretty tasty. Uh, but uh, he's talking about having some for his wedding, so I don't know. I might have to make some more just, just for him for that. So he's a fan of the Concord grape wine as, as well. Uh, strawberry was wonderful. Yes, no, no, but uh, definitely more strawberries next time. Actually, nope, didn't bring it. Didn't bring it, didn't you bring it? Nope, I didn't bring it. Yeah, the last batch of cranberry wine that I made, no, that was a cranberry mead, I'm sorry, a strawberry mead, uh, where I went from three pounds of fruit to four pounds of fruit. Uh, to give it more flavor. So again, uh, three pounds of fruit is, is considered average, the average minimum amount of fruit uh, for a given batch of wine, uh, which is, you know, fruit being as expensive as it is and 
I was paying for this out of my own pocket. <laughs> three pounds was all I was going to put in. Uh, but now that I found out uh, what three pounds of fruit in, in your wine tastes like, uh, I'm now using four pounds. Uh, thank you all for watching with the ads <laughs> that precede or interrupt the videos because <laughs> that's what's paying for it along with a few members that I have uh, as well. I can afford more fruit. So I would suggest, yeah, um, the, uh, I'm not getting up to grabbing any more of these uh, bottles of wine. I've got like five of them here and I'm not getting up. Uh, Chocolate Rose 34, what is your key to sparkling wine or lacking the fizz but tastes good? Um, not all wines will do it. I did put, bring any of the sparkling uh, containers here. Um, not all wines will do it. It takes normally a long time to degas, uh, more so than the. And what I've discovered is that if I do not degas uh, those uh, those containers or carboys of wine, and just simply uh, once they've been back sweetened. I'll usually just go ahead and bottle those direct. Uh, and I will use what I knew I need. I did bring it. And I will put those in the uh, the, the flip top older style pressure bottles. Uh, you put them in a wine bottle, two, one of two things will happen. If you're using, uh, I've, I've learned, if you're using a natural wine cork and, uh, you're, uh, and you've got uh, more of a sparkling wine in there, it'll simply pop the cork. If you're using a, uh, a natural wine cork, then it'll break the bottle <laughs> last week. <laughs> As a matter of fact, <laughs> I don't know better than to do that again. But no, if you put them in a pressure bottle designed for it, then uh, you'll be okay. Uh, again, if the wine is past the point where, there's, where fermentation has stopped completely uh, and simply adding more sugar is not going to restart fermentation, which means that you're not going to get more CO2, which means you're not going to get a sparkling wine, there's really not much you can do about it. I've got a video plan uh, to experiment around with that uh, a bit later on to see if I can get... Uh, uh, if I can get the timing right uh, to create a sparkling wine, but again, that'll be that'll be later on. Uh, da, 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 sounds like you need to make a five-gallon batch for the wedding. I can make up to a three-gallon batch using uh, the fermenter that I've got. Um, but if they're talking about getting wedding, uh, getting married sometime in the summer, that's not really a lot of time. I mean, nine months I can do uh, if I had that much. Uh, advanced timing to put together kind of a credible wine, but uh, six months, I mean, I might drink it, but not five gallons worth. It's just not enough time uh, uh, to do a decent wine. Brandon, hi there. I really enjoy your channel. I've learned a lot. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Again, Brandon, uh, this channel is, for the most part, uh, an inspiration that I had of being able to uh, 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 show novice winemakers how a novice winemaker makes wine. <laughs> so when I first started making wine last year, I decided to start doing videos on, on, on how I was doing uh, during that whole process. Uh, the original intent was to have a, a more of a, uh, a steady progression in terms of techniques for making wine. Uh, but when I first started getting comments from some of uh, the viewers indicating that the process was, was getting a bit more confusing and it was just more complicated. And I, I realized that, hey, why, why make it any more complicated than, than you need to? Why not just keep it simple? So that's why you, you see me using the, the simplest recipes that I can find or finding commonalities within the recipes and making a simplified version of, of what I see. Uh, why I don't use a lot of uh, additives to the wine. Basically, that's, that's what you see in this channel. Uh, and I and I will keep it that way. If I wanted to do more advanced techniques, uh, I'll start another. I already have another channel. Uh, I would do a third channel. <laughs> okay. Um, congrats on your son. That's exciting. Thank you, William. Appreciate that. Um, Michael, sounds like you need uh, <laughs> two twenty-gallon fish tanks for. <laughs> Here's the thing. 
Once people know that you know how to make wine, <laughs> it's amazing how many friends you find <laughs> or will find you <laughs> to, help, to, help you, to help you drink it, you know? <laughs> Uh, but usually what happens is that uh, um, they'll get you at a point where the wines really aren't done. I mean, they'll, if it's got alcohol, a lot of times, you know, I'll be happy with that. But uh, if you want to give out some decent tasting wines, then you're looking at about a year to have that done. Uh, which again, uh, for those of you who missed it early on, I, I pointed out that the uh, playlist that I have created uh, for the uh, winemaking process uh, that occurs after you put everything in your primary fermenter, you might want to check that out because uh, winemaking is a time-consuming process. Basically, you're looking at nine months to a year, sometimes a year and a half, uh, to have something that's going to be really, really good. Uh, da -da -da -da. Joseph, uh, do you have any future plans on making any passion fruit or tropical wines or meads? Passion fruit, don't know about. It depends on the cost of the fruit and whether or not the fruit's in season. Uh, if I looked at something exotic was the uh, dragon fruit. And this was like last month. Uh, once I realized, started looking at some of the recipes and realized that I would need at least about eight of those uh, dragon fruits. Okay, but you come to the realization that each dragon fruit was about five fifty each. <laughs> And I decided I was going to spend forty dollars to make a gallon of wine. <laughs> it, it somehow it, it didn't suit the needs of this particular channel of, of making wine as cheaply as possible on that shoestring budget. Now, when I came up with that phrase, uh, uh, wine, make, uh, "wine making on a shoestring budget," that was my budget. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if I didn't have any money, I certainly certainly think that a lot of people that are watching this channel probably don't have a lot of money either. So I, I want to keep things as as cheaply as possible. So dragon fruit, yeah, I, exotic fruit uh, probably won't happen. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Uh, what's your second channel? Um, when I bought, let's see if I can do this. Can't do it. When I bought that uh, pendulum clock, that Seiko pendulum, no, nope, yep, this one. <laughs> well, anyway, when I bought that clock, uh, I didn't, no, I should have. I ought to move that Brew Demon video over as well. But I, that was the uh, first unboxing video that I did for that channel. Uh, when I purchased a, uh, uh, a washing machine from my apartment, finally, uh, instead of using the community laundry, which is like just right across the street over there, um, I did an unboxing on that. I mean, it wasn't designed to do anything more than just have a, a, a channel for unboxing it. I wasn't really going to make anything of it. Uh, I think it was like eight months ago I did that, that video on, on, on the clock. And, yeah, on the clock. I think I will move that Brew Demon video over there as well. Uh, but no, it's not something that I'm planning on growing. Uh, if I buy something, then I'll... Put, I should have did it with my tablet. <laughs> when I buy something, I'll do probably do unboxing and then I'll put the video over there. Uh, in case of that washing machine, I really just wanted to just, you know, take it out of the box, plug it in, <laughs> do some laundry, but <laughs> I figure, hey, okay, why not? Uh, do you think you can age wines in carboys? Yes, that's called bulk aging. And now that I've got the carboy, well, if you've got a carboy uh, or carboys to do it, uh, that's more like the proper way to do it as opposed to doing your aging in, in, in bottles. Um, you just have to remember that uh, uh, you just have to. Ah, oh, that's what I want. You just have to remember that uh, when you're doing your wines, and this is for everybody. When you're doing your wines, you are going to have to uh, rack your wines periodically, and I've got a screen for that. And by racking your videos, it basically means that as time goes on, uh, sediment or or dead yeast, now called lease, is going to settle on the bottom of your video, and if you don't remove the rest of your wine off of that sediment over a period of time, uh, it's going to start to develop off flavors. So you rack your wine uh, to get it off that lease. And basically what that looks like is that, not that one. Bear with me a second here. I don't want the playlist. I want that one. Oh, it's not going to let me do it. It's right there. 
I had a, nope, it's not gonna let me do it. I had a screen for uh, a big blow up of showing this lease layer. And quite honestly, it was working <laughs> earlier. So let's see if it's gonna let me do it. It is not gonna let me do it. Anyway, that big blank spot <laughs> on the side of your screen uh, where this afternoon <laughs> the image was there is not there no more. So, okay, fine, be that way. Anyway, uh, so I can with this way. all this white stuff, you need to get your wine off of that. So you just basically just transfer it into a, a separate uh, carboy uh, once every six or seven weeks or so. And uh, eventually your wine is going to get clear. And then you, for the most part, your wine is done with the exception of the aging process, which can take up to a year, year and a half for that to get done. I can't believe that didn't work. It worked during track during practice, but okay. Enough of that. Let me get back. Okay. Brandon, I'm making wine on a Santos budget. Caribbean Queen, thank you. You're welcome. Chocolate Rose 34. Did you ever try that blend? No, I actually looked it up. I Googled it. And decided, uh, no, not at this time. Yep, I actually Googled that. Have you tried an eggshell method to clear your wine? Um, I did. I, I am going to do a video much, much later on, on on using some of the techniques for for, for, for clearing your wine naturally. Uh, the eggshells was one. I actually tried that. Uh, mixed results. Uh, eggshells, egg whites is another. Um, I mean, there's always cold crashing. Helps out sometimes. Uh, but no, I'm not going to be using any, any sparkaloid or bentonite or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it was just a test. It was actually that first batch of strawberry wine that I made. Um, one of my very early videos uh, because it was taking forever for the wine to clear and I was you know kind of kind of wondering, you know, what's up? So I dropped in some eggshells and, and tried to see how that worked. I don't know if I used eggshells while I take. Uh, that's when I realized that certain foods like, like strawberries and that's why I needed the pectin enzyme, which is why I bought it, and which is why I currently still use it uh, uh, for my wines, because it's just, I don't have the time to just simply wait it out most of the time uh, before Using, I have to reuse what limited equipment that I've got for the next batch. Uh, Connie, welcome. Uh, my mead is still bubbling a little after six or eight weeks. Well, it's still early. Uh, in primary, in primary, you should have racked it by now into secondary, and it will still bubble. I mean, uh, bubbling after seven weeks is not necessary. Well, seven weeks kind of, maybe sort of. It might still be uh, fermenting. Um, your hydrometer readings will let you know what's going on there. I mean, if you're coming in with a, if you have a hydrometer and it's coming in at uh, 0.994 or 990, uh, then basically, basically your wine is just simply outgassing or releasing CO2, which is what wine normally does. I mean, if I had the time and the patience, uh, then yeah, I would let the wine outgas naturally without having to degas it prematurely uh, just so I can get it in a bottle. I wouldn't worry about it. It's, too, it's still kind of early. Um, William, is the reason that you stay away from chemicals for budget purposes or do you prefer natural methods? Well, um, both. <laughs> uh, once I realized that uh, when I'm drinking uh, commercial wine, especially reds uh, that contain sulfites, uh, I usually find that I end up uh, uh, with headaches after drinking the wine. Not hangovers, headaches. Uh, and I've noticed that since I don't use sulfites or stopped using sulfites in my wine, I don't have that those headaches anymore. Um, yeah, I, I would much prefer just a more natural wine, personally. Uh, for budgetary purposes, uh, I don't money to be buying you know, stuff like that. I mean, I did buy the cabinet tablets. Uh, uh, going through the whole wine stabilization process. Now, I, I and 
when I was learning how to do these wines and watching all of the other winemaking channels, natural winemaking channels, uh, uh, such as City Steading and uh, 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 Paw Paws and you know the like, uh, where they're not using sulfites or, ke or chemicals and their wines com are coming out you know just fine. That was pretty much the emphasis that I, impetus that I needed to uh, go ahead and try that method myself. You just have to be more more careful in terms of sanitation, making sure all of your equipment is sanitized. Uh, uh, throughout the entire process uh, so that you don't introduce uh, any harmful bacteria or, and, and whatnot. Uh, you've, if you've seen my video on sanitation, <laughs> then uh, yeah, you, you know that sanitation is something that you should take seriously. And if you do that, you should have a wine that, uh, that's problem free for the most part. Yeah, most part. <laughs> um, John T., uh, what do you find to be the best strainer bag for adding fruit during primary? Well, I've only had one type of straining bag. Uh, these are uh, paint straining bags that I picked up over at Lowe's. These are, uh, I need to get the five gallon version, but I've got three one gallon version of the paint straining bags. Uh, they're very durable. You can use them over and over and over again. You can really, if necessary, if, get your little ball and, 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 and tie it off and squeeze every last little, little <laughs> drop of, of juice that might still be in, in the remaining fruit at the end of uh, at the end of primary. But they are paint straining bags. They're dirt cheap. They're a lot cheaper than what you're going to find on Amazon. I mean, if you want to buy uh, specialized uh, uh, wine straining bags or, or brewery straining bags from Amazon or, or whatnot, you can, but if there's like a Lowe's, which for me is quite literally right across the street, <laughs> quite literally, I can actually hit it with a rock. Uh, uh, that's where I went uh, once, once I, I found out that uh, those work just fine. Uh, let's see, natural with the exception of yeast. This is true. Again, a wild uh, heart. Uh, I am going to try doing a natural wine uh, using um, uh, wild yeast. Uh, I'm still working on the mechanics of doing that, but yeah, that's going to be later on this year. Uh, T-shirt help desk. Hey, Charles, how are you? Fine. Actually, very fine because I found out yesterday. Well, I had two things. One, I had uh, my annual <laughs> with my uh, with my physician. Uh, it was it was a video thing. Uh, video teleconference uh, and uh, I was able to get an appointment for my first COVID shot uh, for next Friday so you know <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good <laughs> No, I've got that coming sooner rather than later um, it's going to be the Moderna in case anybody's question so uh, wondering so I've got two shots for that um, if so could you briefly explain the pro uh, did I miss something here oh degassing uh, degassing is the one video I have not done yet uh, and I, I indicated in my last video that uh, the reason for that is that I don't have, didn't have a proper degassing tool uh, to do it. And the way that I'm currently doing it, I probably wouldn't recommend. Therefore, I'm not going to do a video on how I'm doing it. Uh, the degassing wand is one of those pieces of equipment that I'm still going to get. <laughs> kind of soon. <laughs> and then once I've got the degassing wand, then I'll do a video on that and, and add it over with the... Uh, 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 winemaking process videos for for everybody to uh, to make use of. Um, yeah, but there to to back sweeten and bottle if you haven't back sweetened already. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, there's still a lot of CO2 uh, still in the wine, even though it might not you might not see any activity uh, on the uh, block. Uh, you need to release that CO2 uh, before you put it in the bottle because you don't really want it uh, uh, either popping a cork or <laughs> breaking a bottle because of the uh, built up and pressure. Uh, so you run a degassing tool, which basically uh, agitates everything. If you think of a, if you think of a stick blender, <laughs> okay, and you've got it down there and, and, and you give it a few quick pulses and uh, you'll see a lot of foam and a lot of bubbles coming up. Uh, and, that's pretty much the process of degassing. You're doing this for uh, a good half hour, <laughs> at least, uh, letting it uh, agitate and then letting the bubbles release. And then uh, once that's done, you kind of repeat the process until everything's all said and done. Pressure, uh, CO2 is gone. You can bottle and that's that. That's the process of degassing. Uh, 
You guys just haven't seen me doing it yet. Uh, da, 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 John T. You should look on Craigslist and Facebook for winemaking growing stuff. It's pretty easy to score a ton of equipment dirt cheap. Um, well, yeah, I'm getting a lot of activity on Facebook uh, for that stuff. Craigslist, no, I don't want to buy used. Uh, certainly buy new. Uh, and again, it's uh, it's still a question of this channel is still relatively small. Uh, there's not there's not a lot of money in it <laughs> per se uh, uh, to handle the purchase of, of, of basic equipment like carboys and fruit and uh, more airlocks and stuff like that. Uh, uh, I mean, I'll get a lot of this stuff over time, certainly this year, but. Uh, no, I'm in no big hurry to do it. I mean, if I get a lot more sub, uh, subscribers or a lot more members or a lot, anyone giving me super chats or super stickers, you know, <laughs> then uh, maybe that might be a reality. But the way it stands now, uh, uh, this channel is going to pay for itself. I'm no longer reaching into my pocket. Uh, so if it takes a little longer, it's just going to take a little longer before I get this stuff. Uh, vacuum. All hard vacuum, some do. Not quite sure of that, but if you're referring to, and I do keep up with, I don't really watch their videos, the uh, the other winemaking channel videos a lot. I'll see what their uh, the title of their videos are and how many uh, uh, views they get. But uh, uh, who was that? City Steading just uh, did one uh, using the uh, the vacuum pump. Uh, the uh, like when you uh, are trying to uh, uh, preserve your wine after opening it, uh, you put in a little stopper that's got a little vent in it, and there's, there's a small hand vacuum pump that you pump out, uh, pump out uh, some of the air so it won't uh, it won't oxidize as quickly. Uh, I've got that, and I've done that process. Uh, it it will extract some of the CO2, but I've found out that if your wine needs to be degassed. You need uh, you need to do a better job than uh, using the vacuum pump. Uh, it's pretty to look at, but it does not extract enough if your wine is still you know in the process of degassing. Uh, but yeah, um, let's see. Thank you, Fundy Fee. Appreciate that. Special shout out. You do realize this is real money, right? Okay, you, your parents know you you got their credit card, <laughs> but I pre I do appreciate it though. <laughs> I really I do. Uh, thank you for the basic info. I'll get some carboys, sir. Uh, actually, found a place that had some cheap carboys online. One uh, version. These are all four-liter carboys. Uh, I need a couple of one-gallon carboys, uh, only because when you rack the wine off your lease, this is you lose a certain amount of wine, and after a couple of rackings, where where you might start out with four liters, uh, you usually end up with like a gallon, sometimes less. And you want to keep that little head space <laughs> as, as small as possible. So, uh, no, no. See, now you're showing off. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no. Uh, appreciate that. Um, well, I'm losing track here. Rip it. Ever made a mistake in winemaking that turned out to be a happy accident? Uh, yes. When I made my first uh, apple uh, sparkling wine, it was totally a mistake. And uh, it was it was a wine, I mean, apple wine, I had been, already done a couple of apple wine batches before. Usually they don't last long. They never make it to the one year mark. <laughs> usually by the six month mark, they're pretty, they're gone. Uh, harshness, taste, whatever, they're usually just gone. But I was running short of, I was running short of wine bottles at that time. Still kind of, sort of am, but, uh, and I started using my, one of my, uh, I put them in my six uh, uh, Otis pressure bottles. That's all I had left. They, I don't like using it for that, for that purpose because uh, one, they're smaller. And two, uh, I don't know, I was, like to have these open for for whatever might come up. But in any event, I uh, ended up putting in there, putting it on the cap, uh, thinking, okay, fine, no big deal. Uh, uh, when I went to do a t uh, when I went to crack one open and tasted it and did the opening, poof, 
It's like a little, little, little spray, well, not spray, but a little, I find <laughs> spray of mist <laughs> came up letting me know that the uh, uh, the wine was uh, was sparkling. And you see the little, little bubbles coming up, so I figured, okay, I'll, I'll pour some. And yeah, that's when I realized that uh, sparkling apple wine was actually pretty good. <laughs> that's not, now my preferred way of, of, of making the apple wines if I can do it. But again, uh, as I said earlier, I want to try and uh, refine the technique so that uh, I can make an apple wine or make a sparkling wine uh, when I want to, as opposed to circumstances being, you know, okay, it, it, it just ended up that way. Michael Pitts, Pelts, $5, thank you very much. <laughs> I do, once again, I appreciate this, everyone, uh, quite a lot. <laughs> Fun, DC. <Fee>, you're funny. <laughs> Caribbean Queen, uh, have you tasted the mixed berry wine yet? Nope, it is still sitting in a carboy. Uh, I showed a picture. No, it's in the community section. Uh, it's in the public version. I've got one in the uh, member section, but I also took a picture and posted it in the uh, uh, public section of the community section. Of my uh, channel, of my channel, uh, showing the number of carboys that I've got lined up. Pre all the previous batches that are just sitting in there. Uh, there's some are 18 that are still sitting in carboys, um, and the uh, mixed berry is is still in there. I've got them kind of lined up, sorted uh, by date. Uh, so it's like on it's like on the far left. I think it's the fifth or fourth or fifth one from the from the from the start, so it's gonna it's it's still got some bulk aging to do. Uh, I don't think it's clear yet, uh, so it it'll be a while. I'm kind of curious to see how that one uh, turns out. <laughs> Michael, thank you very much. Uh, my parents don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, as long as they don't know, you do realize. That once you press that that send button, that money, I won't say it's mine. It's actually Google's. Uh, Google is going to take their cut, uh, and then at the end of the month, uh, everything goes over to AdSense. And AdSense, uh, if you've got, uh, if you've accumulated at least one hundred dollars, then they'll send you a check. If you don't hit that hundred dollar threshold, then you won't get a check that month. You have to wait till the next month before they send you anything. Uh, so far, uh, the uh, money that I'm getting from ads alone is usually, is, is now settling into about the $90 range just on ads alone. Yeah, just on ads alone. So the memberships and certainly the, uh, the super chat, super stickers, they push me over that limit, uh, which helps out, really does help out because otherwise, you know, uh, yeah. Otherwise, and I'll use this one as an example, like when I first started out, and this is what? Uh, apple wine. <laughs> Usually when I make apple wine, I, I did I have a video on this one? No, I just made this to make it. Uh, when I first started out, uh, I didn't have, I didn't have airlocks, I didn't have stoppers, I didn't have carboys, okay? I had the jugs that it came in, either the two quart uh, jugs or the, uh, one gallon jugs, which also pass now for when I don't have enough carboys as my primary and sometimes actually now, yeah, I got five of them sitting in, in secondary uh, fermenters. Um, yeah, I managed to get some, the, the, the initial process was basically just to put the cap on so that it was just barely on there, just enough to let the CO2 escape. And then I got some airlocks, uh, didn't really know what size stoppers I would need for the size carboys that I was getting. So yeah, I drilled a little, drilled a little hole, uh, put the airlock in, then sealed it up on both sides. And basically that was it. This is the only one I've got left because I might make another one of these because these come in handy. Uh, but hey, when I didn't have any money, <laughs> you make do with what you got. Uh, I think some of you might have seen, I think I did a video once at the end of the video, basically uh, I was uh, going to stop shooting videos for a while because A, I ran out of these and I ran out of these uh, and I needed to let the process 
go along a little bit so that I can free up some of these and start drinking more of these so I can free up more of these. Well, um, yeah, these you make do with what you got. Uh, if it's and this was before my channel came monetized, so uh, once I realized how much this channel cost, <laughs> I did a spreadsheet or modify heavily modified a spreadsheet so I can keep track of it throughout the year. Uh, spending a lot of money uh, to um, uh, to run a channel, especially the, you have, because of the fruit you have to buy, the cardboard you have to buy. I mean, this, that, and the other. Um, if you're thinking about starting a channel, I would recommend it. Uh, if it's just a, a vlog where you're just walking around talking about issues of the day, those don't cost you anything. If it's a how-to channel, well, guess what? You've got to how-to something. <laughs> These things, it's going to end up costing you money. Uh, but again, I have fun doing it uh, as long as I can kind of sort of afford it. <laughs> kind of, sort of. Uh, I'll continue to do it for a while. Uh, it's, it's just something to do. And I like this interaction that I get doing the, uh, the live streams. Uh, I probably still won't do them more than just once a month, even though I should, I'm not yet. <laughs> uh, but again, uh, let me get back on, on point here. Um, does artificial light affect group flavors? I have no idea, Rip. I really don't. Uh, Connie, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Uh, Rip, I really don't know. Uh, usually, uh, once my uh, wine goes into secondary, it goes into a closet uh, where I don't really bother it uh, unless I'm checking it uh, every now and then to make sure it doesn't need to be um, um, uh, racked or for some of them where I, they don't have airlocks and I'm still using the cap method uh, to see if it, the cap needs to be loosened up to let out uh, some pressure, uh, CO2, and then uh, put it back on. Uh, but no, I don't really worry about light. Uh, when you see me uh, in the kitchen with, uh, with my fermenter, the big one, uh, no, I don't really think light really affects it all that much. Uh, it's not direct sunlight. So as long as it's not direct sunlight, uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, what we've got now, I don't really think that's big of an issue, not unless you're like shining a light directly on it, you know. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Uh, start. I looked at uh, uh, Party On, and I don't know, the jury's still out on that one. Uh, I do have a, a link to my uh, business PayPal account for donations. Uh, usually that's in the comments section as well. Uh, yeah, I had to create a, I had to uh, start a, a business account. <laughs> Once the channel became monetized, it became a business. It's, it's, presently, it's a sole proprietorship. And uh, if anybody who's ever tried to start a business before, this is like second or third business that I've actually done in my lifetime. Running your own business is hard work. <laughs> And for a guy that was supposed to be retired, you know, <laughs> it's still hard work. Uh, uh, let's see, Mike, I'm starting my own channel now with your blessing, uh, which reminds me, no, no, I uh, never did get a call back from uh, your relative about starting his channel. Uh, content matter aside, you know, uh, if he had any questions about starting his channel, I would have been more than happy to uh, to talk to him. Uh, again, for uh, for Michael, uh, starting your own channel, do not use your 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 personal YouTube channel. When you go through the process, they explain that you know basically you're going to set up a, a secondary channel. Uh, it's still under your primary account, but it's it's a secondary channel so that you don't really uh, uh, have any interaction uh, per se with uh, uh, your own personal stuff. On, on that side of the, of the equation. Uh, Brian, question, Charles, with your ciders, have you noticed using different sugar? I haven't gotten to that point yet. Uh, does one make more of a dry cider than the others? Uh, no, I haven't really noticed it. I don't really think that's gonna be an issue with the sugars that you're gonna be using per se. Uh, it's more the uh, selection of the yeast and its uh, alcohol tolerance before it taps out. 
Uh, if you've got a yeast with a low alcohol tolerance, you might end up with a, 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 a wine or a cider that's it's going to have some inherent sweetness at the end of the process or at the end of the fermentation. If you're using a more aggressive uh, yeast that tops out, it's supposed to top out at 18%, but I've had some go into 20 range, uh, then you're definitely going to end up with a dry product and your back sweetening, regardless of the sugar, is, is where you're going to make up the difference. Uh, uh, to get you there, but uh, no, one sugar, the, uh, the level of sweetness versus the other, I, mean, I don't really know what else to say about that. Uh, opinion, apple juice or apple cider? Can't answer that uh, because uh, my apple cider is still, uh, is still in the works. I think it's at the four month stage. Nope, didn't bring it. Uh, so I really haven't tasted it yet. Uh, to be able to compare it with uh, with an apple wine uh, might be an interesting video to do. This was uh, the twelfth. I think there's about a month or two difference. So yeah, that might be an interesting taste test: uh, apple cider versus apple wine. Although that apple cider, and I did use apple cider for that particular uh, uh, batch instead, and I did not use apple wine. Um, Apple cider has a generally kind of a low AVB, and I think because of the yeast that I used, it might end up being a bit higher, kind of encroaching upon that, that, that wine ter <laughs> territory. So uh, nonetheless, uh, yeah, I might end up doing a video on that uh, later on. Uh, no, no, no worries. He's been busy. Oh, okay. I, I kind of thought he uh, either choked or, or, or wasn't quite sure. Uh, but again, if he's available, if he's ready, uh, I'll, I'll let him know what I've learned so far. Um, or he can watch my, is that my last YouTube video? Or the one before that? What? No, it was my last YouTube video where I, I kind of talked about the trials and tribulations of being a influence, a, so, a social influencer. <laughs> uh, but, okay. Uh, Brian, uh, I've been experimenting with dark brown sugar using more fine cane sugar or another. The only one that I've used uh, dark brown sugar with uh, was my uh, first banana wine, and that's still in the works. Actually, it's been bottled now because uh, it cleared very, very early. Uh, I'm tasting on the banana wine, even though it was nowhere near being ready. The banana wine was definitely a one-year product, probably one and a half year before it's actually ready. Uh, I did a half and half mixture, half brown sugar and half sugar, because I wasn't sure about using brown sugar in a wine. It was my first time using brown sugar. Uh, one thing that did come clear uh, in the in the six month tasting was that I should have went all brown sugar, and if I ever make it again, probably will. Uh, the next time I will use brown sugar, much much richer flavor. Um, uh, oh. Uh, would make Simon that my cider is probably all the sugar is completely. Well, I mean, if the sugars are being eaten completely, then that's, you know, that happens. That's normal. I mean, that's what back sweetening is for. Um, found out about, uh, found you a month ago and uh, loving this channel. I noticed that there was an uptick. On average, I'm getting about roughly 560 uh, new subscribers a month. That's what I've been averaging for the last couple of months, really. I'm at uh, 31. When I last looked, it was like 3180, uh, the number of subscribers. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, I've noticed that uh, my channel is, is definitely becoming more and more noticeable in YouTube. Uh, I know when I first started out, <laughs> you couldn't find my stuff anywhere. <laughs> I mean, you can just scroll through the listings of, of, of winemaking channels and... <laughs> I was nowhere to be seen, <laughs> but eventually you get noticed, and I guess the more and more you get noticed, uh, 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 the better it is. Uh, yeah, the better it is. Um, Brian, nice wild banana wine. That sounds amazing. Have you heard of Wells Banana Bread Beer? No, I have not. <laughs> I was a little reluctant about the banana wine. In fact, when I put the, uh, when I first put the uh, thumbnail. Uh, on my YouTube page uh, for all my friends, uh, they were pretty skeptical about the idea of a, of a banana wine, okay? So was I. So 
yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to turn out ultimately. I think it's got potential, uh, which would really be great. Uh, uh, yeah, it would really be great. But then my opinion is one thing. Uh, once uh, once we're past COVID and I've got people coming over and doing uh, doing wine tasting, so that it's not just my opinion <laughs> about what my wine tastes like, even though if you've seen my wine tasting, you've seen me giving you a pretty honest assessment of what I think about that a given wine at, at a given time just because i've made it that does not necessarily mean that it's great okay um um could guess just keep making videos and the subs will come my friend uh, also by chance have you tried making apple jack in the freezer apple jack in the freezer is illegal in the united states i'll just simply say that <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll say a little bit more than that. The problem with making apple jack is that, uh, and the reason why it's it's illegal in the states, it's kind of it's same situation as as, as doing uh, uh, distilled spirits. Um, there is a there, there is a very real issue of of potential blindness, and the reason for that is this: uh, when distillers are making distilled spirits, as I understand it, uh, the first por uh, portion of of their distilled spirits and the in portion of the distilled spirits are usually uh, discarded uh, because there's a very high concentration of methanol. Uh, when you're doing freeze distillation, uh, you're not removing any of that built up methanol, you're pretty much concentrating it, which again leads to the potential fact that you could uh, suffer uh, permanent blindness as a result of that. So that's why I'm more or less have I made it? Yeah. Uh, you'll never see me advising it uh, if it's something that you want to do then you know uh, legally I'll just simply say don't do it <laughs> okay that's all I'm going to say um, yes no no I, I figured you would be um, once you've had your shots <laughs> then we'll see <laughs> Oh man, I'm so glad I'm getting my shot next week. Well, still getting the second one, but I'm so glad at least. I don't know. Well, anyway. Um, da, 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 am I missing anything? Oh, I should have put that on there. Um, yeah, after the last uh, live stream, uh, there were a couple of questions that uh, I did not answer or didn't get a chance to answer um, uh, because of time, I guess. Uh, so what I started doing and probably will do, even though I seem to be doing a good job with the questions this time, probably because I'm not making anything, taking up a lot of time, uh, any questions that did not get answered uh, that I might have missed uh, usually will end up in the uh, uh, public section of the uh, 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 members channel page. Uh, and I'll have answers for you there, probably more detailed answers for you there. But so far, we're doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good with answering a lot of these questions. <laughs> uh, just as an aside, no, no. Uh, I kind of wish you weren't singing in the car <laughs> when you were bringing me home that day because I was getting a little nervous. <laughs> but apart from that, okay. <laughs> uh, good. Uh, oh, time. All right. Uh, yeah, I stopped bringing my uh, hourglass over here uh, for a couple of reasons. There's space on the desk, the table uh, for all of this stuff. And two, uh, if you saw the incident that occurred with the, uh, the hourglass, uh, no, I elected not to use a, a wood glue to uh, join everything as a permanent join. Uh, with and the reason for that was probably the reason why I never did it in the first place. It's just a heck of a lot easier to clean that hourglass, the glass portion of that hourglass, when I can take it out of the cage as opposed to having to try and work between the, 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 the little spines to try and clean it. Uh, it's just a whole heck of a lot easier. So uh, rather than tempt fate by picking it up from the, from the top as opposed from the sides, I just don't use it anymore, uh, uh, at least as far as the videos are concerned. So that was that. That was <laughs> that was that. Um, <clears throat> ah. 
Uh, I had given thought to doing a taste testing during the live stream. I actually thought about doing it during this live stream, but decided, nah. <laughs> I might do a taste testing. It'll be more of a taste testing because, you know, about an hour and a hour, hour and a half of these uh, live streams go. More than likely, I'll probably end up finishing quite a bit of the bottle. I might still do that. Probably will do that. Just not this particular one live stream. Um, let's see. The members already know if they wanted to check out the video, but the next wine on tap uh, on the schedule is a hibiscus wine. Uh, got this from uh, Amazon uh, earlier, um, oh, at the end of last month. Uh, so I've got enough to make uh, probably two gallons. It'll be a one gallon batch, but dried hibiscus flowers for that. Following that, uh, I'll probably, I'll pro these are Saturday videos, not the Wednesday videos, which will probably be the wine tastings. Uh, I got half of the amount of dates <laughs> that I need uh, to do a date wine. Uh, I've got two pounds. I need another two pounds. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and give that a shot. And now th that's on the agenda for not next Saturday, Saturday after next, if I can get more dates. Uh, well, now that you guys are helping me out with the Super Chats, when I get more dates, <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, so those two are on tap. Um, what was I thinking? Oh, yeah. A word about the uh, wine tasting videos. I don't know why I'm showing this one because I'm not going to open this bottle. It's got a nice cap and it's got the... <laughs> In fact, let me do that. <laughs> For the one that I really shouldn't even bother to put a label on. Uh, when, I, when you guys see me do my wine tastings, uh, I know there's a... I know there's like a, a certain process you can use uh, to... Uh, properly do a wine tasting that you guys never see me do. Um, I've noticed that uh, on, uh, you know, name drop. I've seen City Steadings, uh, City Steadings uh, wine tastings, and uh, they're becoming a little bit more elaborate <laughs> in their way. Uh, I, I won't do that for this channel, uh, not because I don't know how, <laughs> but because I don't want to. <laughs> so you'll see me doing wine tastings that are far more simple, uh, I don't want to use the word simplistic. No, they're more simplistic. Uh, um, if, if it's at the six month or seven month level, if, if it's an okay wine, you'll see it in my expression. If it's something that I'll have to force down my throat, you'll see that as well. Uh, but again, so if it's a question of process of doing a proper wine tasting, that won't happen. No point to it. Uh, Michael, have you played with Butterfly pea flowers. No. No. It was enough for me to do the elderflower fl uh, wine at first. Okay. Looks like that one's going to turn out to be a success. Uh, getting the hibiscus flowers. I didn't know what hibiscus smelled like until I bought the bag. Okay. To me, it smells like a, a freshly opened box of raisins. Okay, that's what it smells like to me. Uh, very small, very strong raisin flavor. So, okay, fine. Uh, the next flower that I intend to do, I'm still going to do it, is going to be a dandelion wine, since that seems to be a big thing uh, among winemakers. Uh, probably will use dried dandelions because you need quite a bit if you're using fresh dandelions. And I think I indicated in one of my earlier videos, I'm not going to be walking around this this complex, you know, picking up candy lines because you don't know what's done what <laughs> on top of those flowers. So, uh, yeah, I'll do a dandy line, uh, which will probably be the last of the flower wines that I do for a while. Uh, but the uh, butterfly pea flowers, uh, honestly, uh, Michael, that's the first time I've ever heard of those. Uh, yeah. I'll just let it go with that. Uh, date wine, perfect for the first date. I was having an issue. I think I already did the... Uh, no, I haven't opened the bag yet. Uh, I was going to think of doing a thumbnail uh, for the date wine of me uh, kissing the date <laughs> and then having uh, you know the, the text on the, on the, on the left-hand side as, as with my normal thumbnails. But then I realized you know, these things are kind of small, so I probably won't do that. Uh, 
that particular thumbnail. Uh, yeah, if you've seen my thumbnails, usually it's just me off to the side with my, my hand out with, with whatever ingredient that I have to be using at the time. But uh, sanitizing <laughs> and shrouded and whatnot. Uh, yeah, occasionally you'll see. You, well, <laughs> how can I say this? Uh, become stir crazy. I'll put it to you that way. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> in order to keep my sanity, you might see me doing stuff like that from time to time. But ordinarily, I'm a pretty serious fellow. So, okay, you know, <laughs> I'm just simply saying. Uh, can I drop off some dates tomorrow? You still have those dates from uh, Super Bowl or did you buy more? If you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, because I really do need two more pounds of, the, of these dates. And uh, I think Sunkiss makes some, and then and then there's the uh, the generic Walmart version. Once I realized that there was no preservatives uh, on the dates, that I realized that these were acceptable to use for making wines. But I, uh, yeah, these are only like uh, half pound bags. So I, I grabbed four, thinking I was doing something, then not realizing that uh, eight ounces was only half a pound. So yeah, if you want to do that, that'd be great. I'd appreciate it. What's tomorrow? Sunday. Yeah, fine. Hey, one thing about being retired, <laughs> every day is a weekend. <laughs> I'm just letting you know so that when you finally make it, <laughs> you lose track of what day it is because every day is a weekend. <laughs> uh, okay. Michael, uh, best date, uh, blah, 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 blah. These are uh, month, day, years. Are they? Yeah, month, day, years is what I use. This is America. That's how we do it. <laughs> Perry, uh, can you do a rosé and honey wine, a rose and honey wine, or a or a meal? Um, I probably could much, much later on, uh, looking at my content calendar. I, I, it's it's a pretty growing list of things that I've got, ideas that I've got that uh, we're going to keep me occupied uh, for quite a while. Uh, yeah, for quite a while. Uh, I might add that to the mix. Actually, uh, uh, some of the ideas that I see in the live chat when I when I do the review of the video, uh, a lot of these things sometimes will end up in, in my content uh, calendar for as possible ideas or suggestions for something we do to, uh, to do later on. Uh, so yeah, that's great. But the, uh, where was Michael's? Yeah, I'll have to track that one down. The, uh, yeah, there it is. The uh, butterfly pea flowers. <laughs> I'll have to think about that one. <laughs> I shouldn't say that that way because when I, last time I said that was, uh, when I said uh, that about the uh, kombucha, uh, which actually turned out to be quite well. Still keeping my scobies alive. I'm not making anything with it, uh, probably not till the summer, but I'm surprised those things are still hanging on. Um, okay, see you tomorrow. Uh, retirement is wonderful. I'm with you. Connie, you're retired? <laughs> Good for you, girl. <laughs> Another thing about retirement, when you first retire, uh, when you when you finally decided you're going to retire and you, you turn in all your paperwork and say goodbye to all your friends and all of that, uh, for the first couple of weeks, almost months, retirement seems like you're on vacation. You always have this idea in the back of your mind that your vacation is going to come to an end soon and you're going to have to go back to work. <laughs> it, it actually did take a couple of months for me, for me to get out of that mindset and realizing that. I don't have to get up and go to work after after a certain number of days of being on vacation. I'm, I'm a free man. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Yeah, and then you realize that you need to do something. Okay, you can't just sit around and watch TV, play video games, and you know, <laughs> putz around and, and do nothing. Which is one of the other reasons for me starting this channel. <laughs> something to do. Um, Yep, yep. 
Uh, Michael, butterfly pea flower is cheap, and from what I understand, what do you mean you understand? I'm under the impression, Michael, that you actually have bought this stuff before. You know what it tastes like. You're telling me, you're throwing out ideas <laughs> without, without a firm basis and what, what it is you're, you're, you're suggesting that I do. Mostly for coloring, blue tint, but smells great. I don't know if every flower can be used to make wine. Michael, I don't know about that. Uh, Connie, by the way, I'm a guy. Well, okay. My apologies. Have to make a slight mental shift here, but okay. My apologies. Hmm. Not even going to ask, but okay. Mental shift made, done. Uh, honest mistake. Well, I mean, it'd be great. Well, Connie, it would, it would have been helpful if your thumbnail had a, like a picture of you instead of just a C. <laughs> I understand, you know, sometimes privacy issues being what they are, but it's kind of helpful to know. Uh, Michael, uh, we've got one in, so I'll report back. Okay. I am the third. <laughs> Connie Swiner the third. Okay. Uh, not going to my full name, but I am the second. <laughs> okay. Uh, when I had my son, uh, I decided, nope, didn't want to have a third. So he's got my first name, but uh, we decided to give him a different middle name. So uh, yeah, being a second, being a third is cool. Um, we'll work on that. All right. Uh, what time is it? 8.26. All right. All right. I'm going to give this, uh, I'm going to give this another, just another few minutes. Uh, I don't really want these, uh, live streams to go on forever. Well, they're fine, but, uh, I don't want them to go on forever. Um, trying to think here. Da, 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 da. Nope, did that, did that, did everything on my list. I'm happy about that. Um, talked about all of that. Did not talk about that, but that's okay. Yeah. I managed to cover a lot of ground. Questions have been great. I appreciate everything that uh, that uh, you've all suggested in your, in your comments. Uh, for the uh, super chats, super stickers, uh, they're definitely helpful. No, I won't say they're helpful. They're definitely needed <laughs> to make this channel a success uh, uh, so that I can buy more stuff for the channel. Uh, with some of these uh, 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 Super Chat, Super Stickers, uh, I think I probably will end up getting a microphone probably, I don't know if it'll be in time for the next live stream because of the way uh, uh, the payouts work uh, for, for YouTube and, and for AdSense. And basically that works out like at the end of the month, uh, by the 15th of the following month, YouTube will send your, uh, your revenue to AdSense. Uh, and AdSense will send a check if it's over the $100 threshold uh, by the 20, between the 23rd and 24th of that month. So they're like a one month delay. Uh, I might have enough time for the next live stream. I'm going to try, but no guarantee to that. But uh, yeah, if you guys are going to donate, if you guys are going to uh, contribute uh, by memberships or, or super chats, yeah, you're going to see where your money went. Yeah, you're going to see where your money went. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think what else. Ah. Uh, Brooke, coming in late. Hi, I like your channel. Any suggestions to make an orange wine and naturally get it clear? Naturally get it clear? The only way you're going to do that is with time. You have to wait it out. Uh, we talked about earlier using uh, some of the more natural methods like eggshells or egg whites. We, we touched on it. Uh, more than likely, there'll be a separate video on that. Uh, but no, uh, as it stands, uh, the if, you, if you're using a totally natural method, then you're talking about waiting it out, giving it time. 
uh, for everything to settle out or, or cold crashing it to, to help it out uh, even more. But no, with, with wines and strawberries and berries, <laughs> for sure, uh, definitely any, any fruit that's going to have a fair amount of pectin in it, I'm going to use a pectin enzyme. Uh, that's the one sheet that I have. Uh, and again, it's only because it's a question of time on my side to get this equipment back in operation uh, sooner rather than later so I can make, uh, make more wines. Uh, yeah, but no, I, other than that, uh, it'll, it'll be an upcoming video using uh, natural methods uh, for wine clarification. Well, I never, uh, let's see, oh my God, by the way, <laughs> or Brooke, well, when you guys see me lean up, I've got a 26 screen here, but on the, uh, the live chats, the actual thumbnails that you guys are using is about the size of a pencil eraser. Okay, so I'm really not getting a, a whole lot of detail. I mean, when you guys are leaving on, on the videos themselves and yeah the, the, the thumbnail is bigger and I can actually click on it and it'll take me to your page and I can actually see you know a bigger image of it but no this is from here it's about the the size of a pencil eraser okay just letting y'all know so Brooke uh, did make the Brian uh, thanks Charles for your videos I find that uh, Wells banana bread beer find and try that Wells banana bread beer uh, good stuff. Well, I need to do more beer videos, quite honestly. This came up, uh, someone had a quick comment about that in one of my uh, beer videos about me doing more uh, more natural beers. Uh, by natural, I mean not opening up a can of extract and, and, and pouring it into a fermenter and all that, uh, but actually getting the grains and the hops and, you know, doing it in a more natural way uh, without having to rely on, 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 uh, on pressure vessels and all of that. There's a simpler way of making beer that I was going to look into. Uh, I would probably end up doing that before I start looking into uh, uh, branching out into the uh, Wells Banana Bread beer and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's worth it. it. The idea is worth merit. Uh, well, Brooke, it. it I don't really know what to tell you because generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, your wine is going to take at least a year anyway uh, for it to be ready. Uh, with some fruits, it sometimes takes a year and a half before your wine is actually ready. Uh, I mean, you can drink it after several weeks <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> if you don't mind a lot of uh, yeast uh, uh, floating around on the inside of your, your wine glass. Uh, but uh, you no, know, you just have to wait it out. I can't really tell you that. Uh, a given batch of wine is going to take X amount of time before it becomes clear. Uh, my banana wine went clear after what? No, I actually had it bottled because it went clear so fast uh, in only eight weeks. And uh, in checking the bottles, did I bring it? No, I did not bring it. And, and looking at the bottles, uh, uh, when I was pulling out the stuff for uh, this uh, presentation, uh, there's still no sediment at the bottom of the bot at the bottles. So those things are clear. They stay clear. Uh, and that was that. It's just that it varies from fruit to fruit. Um, uh, you just have to either wait it out, or again, if you're still trying to, yeah, if you're still trying to do it in a natural way, you just have to wait it out. Or if you're willing to try some of the more natural methods like eggshells or egg whites, and uh, there was a there was a third, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> then uh, or or cold crashing. Uh, yeah, I mean, those are options. Uh, on a natural vein, but if uh, anyone has any suggestions uh, that want to chime in or uh, looking at a replay of this video, uh, if someone wants to leave comments uh, uh, regarding natural wine clearing methods, uh, please chime in. Uh, I'm all for that, but I can't really give you much more of an answer than that uh, on the wine clearing uh, question. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, Perry, what is your favorite flavor of wine to make? I've been asked this question twice already, Perry, but I will answer it again. Uh, right now, the reigning champion is still the uh, dark cherry wine or black cherry wine, depending on how you feel. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see how that dark cherry mead uh, is going to taste. But uh, yeah, the dark cherry is still number one, uh, followed by followed by the, uh, the Concord grape, followed by apple. 
those will probably be my current top three. But again, uh, as I make, as more wines come of age and become, you know, uh, this, this, this raspberry wine might end up being my favorite. Uh, so again, uh, based on what I've tried and made and tasted so far, uh, those would be my top three. Um, great. Thank you, Charles. You're welcome. Um, look forward to the video on that will be forthcoming. Uh, I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the rotation. Um, let's see. All right. It's now 835. Are there any other questions? Bear in mind, there's a 20 second delay between me saying that you saying it, <laughs> you responding <laughs> and another 20 seconds before I see it. So within the next minute, if there are any further questions, uh, I'll go ahead and answer those. But uh, after that, we can wrap this up. Oh, no, no, I'll, I'll just throw it out there. Lipton organic tea, black tea. Costs a little more than their regular stuff, but then again, it tastes better than their regular stuff. Uh, Connie, great session. Have a good night. Caribbean Queen, will you be making another beer? Uh, eventually, summertime is coming. <laughs> eventually. Uh, and I would like to have another beer for that. Uh, uh, Again, I'd much rather try and make, have that next one being uh, uh, using regular beer making ingredients versus extracts and stuff that comes in a can. But if push comes to shove and that's all I can do at, the, at that time, uh, then that's what I'll do. But yeah, definitely more beer. I like beer. <laughs> Only reason why I haven't made as much beer videos is because the uh, number of views on those videos were kind of low and uh, didn't really inspire me to uh, go ahead and make more beer videos because people just weren't watching it. But then again, that was back when the channel was still smaller than what it was now. So uh, if I make another beer video, I probably will get more views and so on and so forth. So forth. Uh, and that's the answer to that question. And folks, I am going to call it a night. There are still 13 of you here, but I think you've been a pretty lively group. Again, for those of you who uh, had super chat, super stickers, uh, I, thank you. Uh, for those of you who uh, just had questions, that's what this channel is here for. That's what the live streams are here for. If you guys didn't have questions, I wouldn't be doing the live streams. Uh, so I'm glad you all uh, were able to chime in and uh, we had uh, yeah, our usual lively session. Uh, so with that, folks, I'm going to say uh, good night and I'll see you next month.